The Ballon d'Or is the most prestigious individual award in football. Only 46 footballers have had the honor of winning it. And so today, I'm going to build the most exclusive club of football where you can only join if you've won the Ballon d'Or. That means Vinicius Jr., I'm sorry. You came really close to winning the 2024 Ballon d'Or, but you finished second, and that means you don't get an entry into this team. The same with Robert Lewandowski, who was robbed in 2020. You probably deserve to be here, but you're not getting in. But one player that's definitely getting into this side 2024 ballon d'or winner rodri now you can debate all you want whether Vinny or rodri deserved it the fact is rodri won he won the euros this year player of the tournament premier league of course i don't know about him being the best player in the world but he definitely is the best player in his position and there you go we've got our first player of this ballon d'or only club and we've actually got him to wear a ballon d'or edition jersey as well this is so cool actually it's a really good thing that the CDM won the Ballon d'Or? Well, at least for us, because once we build our team full of Ballon d'Or winners, we're going to see if they can win the Champions League. And since throughout history, it's mostly been attackers that have won the Ballon d'Or, no way the team was winning the Champions League without players like Rodri. So I think it's worked well in our favor. But before we pick our next player, the team needs a manager. And as I said, every player, but also manager, must have won the Ballon d'Or. So we had a couple of choices for the coach. We could have gone with Zinedine Zidane, but I can't lie. I'd rather have him as a player. So our next best option, Johan Cruyff. He won the Ballon d'Or not once, not twice, but three times. And he's also one of the greatest managers of all time. Pep Guardiola developed his tactics based on his principles. So I think he's a worthy addition to the Ballon d'Or FC, but as a manager. After adding Rodri, it's time to add in a goalkeeper. Now, there have been some incredible goalkeepers in football. Gigi Buffon, Ika Casillas, or even Manuel Neuer. And Neuer was actually the player who came closest to winning the Ballon d'Or, finished on the podium in 2014, the year Germany won the World Cup, but he could never win it. So the only goalkeeper that's ever won the Ballon d'Or is Lev Yashin, known as the Spider for his incredible saves. But you know the best part? He's got the hat in game. That looks so cool, man. And there you go, 1963's Ballon d'Or winner Lev Yashin. He's gonna be the man between the sticks. Trust me, guys, this team's rating is gonna just be unbelievable. Already do 90 plus rated players. And I mean, to be fair, this is the most exclusive club in football. It's going to have the absolute best players of all time. And so it's time to pick a center back. Now, this is super hard, again, because not many centre-backs have won the Ballon d'Or. There's been Beckenbauer, but he's not actually in the game. But there is Fabio Cannavaro. Back in 2006, when Italy won the World Cup, Cannavaro was an absolute rock at the back. It's kind of funny, though, if Zidane didn't do his crazy headbutt, which kind of cost France the World Cup, maybe it would have been Zidane that year with the Ballon d'Or and not Cannavaro. But hey, I'm definitely glad that Cannavaro won the Ballon d'Or because it gives our team a centre-back, which is going to be really rare. And look at him don the Ballon d'Or edition jersey. Bro, this actually looks jokes, man. It's so good. By the way, Cannavaro is just 89 rated. For a Ballon d'Or winner, that definitely feels low. Now, we still need a couple more defensive players, but unfortunately, there really aren't any more Ballon d'Or winners there. Paolo Maldini finished third on the podium a couple of times, No, nope. he never won it. Virgil van Dijk came so close to beating Messi for the Ballon d'Or in 2019, but in the end, he lost by seven votes. So, we're kind of gonna have to get creative like making Rodri a center back, his rating kind of got cooked. But I think it's the only way we can have enough defensive players. There is Lothar Matthäus though. He won the Ballon d'Or in 1990 when Germany won the World Cup. Now, he is basically a center mid, but he is one of the most complete players ever. So I guess Cruyff is going to have to somehow convince him to play in the defense. Because hey, the team needs it. And there you go. One of the greatest midfielders of all time is joining Ballon d'Or FC. But sadly, to play in the defense. Defense. And oh boy, his rating got destroyed too by converting him to a center back. So now officially Matthias and Rodri are tied for being the lowest rated players. I'm wondering if that's going to change. Probably won't because the midfield and attack, the team is just going to go absolutely crazy. Like Luka Modric, who won the Ballon d'Or back in 2018. He won the Champions League that year. But his biggest achievement was taking Croatia to a World Cup final. And he's one of the few active players that we're about to put in our team. 86 rated just feels 
feels wrong. When later on he gets an icon card, what rating do you guys think he'll get? I think my prediction is 91. But let me know in the comments what rating would you give it. Oh, and while you're down there, please subscribe to the channel. It'll feel like a Ballon d'Or to me. But you know what, guys? Modric is only good enough to make our bench. That's right, we're gonna have to put a few Ballon d'Or winners in the bench, which just feels wrong. But what can I do when I have other options like Rude Hullet? He won the Ballon d'Or in 1987. And honestly, he is one of the most complete footballers this sport has ever seen. I mean, just look at his stats. You want to play him as striker, you can do that as a cam, as a centre mid, as even a centre back he's played. Oh, it is iconic seeing Cruyff and Rude Hullet in the same room. Just a couple of Dutch Ballon d'Or winners chilling. But I told you guys, the players from this point onwards are just going to keep getting insane. Hullet is just the star. And the next Ballon d'Or winner we're picking is probably the greatest midfielder of all time. I'm talking about Zinedine Zidane. This is kind of why nope. I didn't pick him as his manager. Because then it wouldn't make sense having him in the team as a player. 1998, there was the year Zidane won the Ballon d'Or. And fun fact, everybody remembers him from his time at Madrid. But he actually won the Ballon d'Or when he was at Juventus. But there you go, guys. The GOAT midfielder is joining this Ballon d'Or FC team. And although Cruyff's going to be the manager, it's good to have the mind of Zidane on the pitch too because he's actually won multiple Champions Leagues as a manager as well. Oh man, I just realized Zidane's 94 rated. I'm wondering if there's going to be a higher rated player than that in our team. Probably not. Nah man, this team is just getting insane. I would be very surprised if Ballon d'Or FC doesn't win the Premier League as well as the Champions League. Nah, it would be a crime because for the camp position, look at the options we've got. There's of course the 2007 Ballon d'Or winner in Kaká. He's one of the few players who managed to win a Ballon d'Or in the Messi Ronaldo era. But Kaká is only making the bench. Even Roberto Baggio, who won the Ballon d'Or in 1993, but even he's only got a spot on the bench. The same with Sir Bobby Charlton. But that's because in that number 10 position, it would be wrong to put anyone other than the player with the most Ballon d'Ors, Leo Messi. Eight times he's been crowned Ballon d'Or winner. Just how crazy is that? He's got the most trophies in the sport. I mean, if I start listing Messi's records and achievements, this video will be way too long. But I think when you think of Ballon d'Or, you think of Leo Messi. And of course, like Luka Modric, he's also currently active, playing for Inter Miami. Now that he's left European football, he's enjoying playing ball with his mates in the MLS. But of course, I had to put Messi in this team. In fact, he gets a red carpet entry into the Ballon d'Or FC. Okay, Cruyff and Messi together is a bit insane. Probably the two most influential players in Barca's history. Okay, I converted Messi to a cam, and he's just gone up to a 90 overall. Of course, since he's a currently active player, he's not gonna have an icon rate but just like Modric, let's do a prediction on what Messi's icon card's gonna be. For reference, Pele is 95. I think I'm leaning to giving Messi 96. Yep, that, that, that's my prediction. Let me know in the comments what you think. And you might think, why did I not put Messi in the right wing position? Because we've got some crazy options like Luis Figo. I know most people remember him for betraying Barcelona and joining Madrid. He actually did win the Ballon d'Or back in 2000, but he's only good enough for the bench. There's even Pavel Nedved who could play there, but again, on the bench because I'm going to go for George Best. He won the Ballon d'Or in 1968 for Manchester United and at the time he was the youngest Ballon d'Or winner ever. He actually beat Sir Bobby Charlton to the award that year and to be honest from the few clips you're able to watch from Georgie Best it seems like he was one of the first magical players football has ever produced. The dribbling was unlike anything seen before. I mean the best way to put it people put his dribbling in the same bracket with the likes of Maradona and Messi. But there you go Best makes the Ballon d'Or FC starting 11, he's going to be playing in that right midfield position. Just three positions to go. And trust me, we've got some absolutely ridiculous players. Let's start with the left wing position. We could, of course, go with someone like Rivaldo, Christo Stoichkov. Both coincidentally played for Barcelona and have won the Ballon d'Or. But I think it would be wrong to go with anyone but Ronaldinho. He won the Ballon d'Or back in 2005. And actually, it's a major surprise that he's only won it once. That's because of how inconsistent he was with his life and everything. And that one season when he was on it, he was better than everyone else. And honestly, Dino is also a player that just puts a smile on people's face. And he's also 93 rated. He's going to be the second highest rated player in our team after, of course, Zizou. That's how highly people rate him. With Ronaldinho coming in, we're definitely adding some samba to the Ballon d'Or FC. It's now time to pick our strikers. And this is the position that has seen the most Ballon d'Or winners in history. We've got options like Benzema, who won 
won the Ballon d'Or in 2022. There's also players like Michael Owen, Andrea Shevchenko, but all of them are only good enough for the bench. Even three-time Ballon d'Or winner Marco Van Basten doesn't get into the first team. Instead, our first striker is going to be five-time Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo. Fun fact, Ronaldo's iconic Sui, that kind of originated at one of the Ballon d'Or ceremonies. <laughs> Oh, I just clocked Ronaldo's going to be like the lowest rated player in this team. 86 along with Luka Modric. That's because he's an active player. But when he gets his icon, and you bet he will, I'm going to go 95 rating for his icon. Now just one position left to complete the Ballon d'Or FC. And guess what? His name is Ronaldo too. There was absolutely no way R9 Ronaldo doesn't make our team. He's of course a two-time winner. And fun fact, in 2002 when he won the World Cup with Brazil, that was literally the only games he played. Apparently he was injured for pretty much the rest of the year, but he still took home the Ballon d'Or. Imagine all the people cribbing about Rodri now. If social media was there back then, they'd say even R9 robbed the Ballon d'Or. But there was still robbery, because those who watched football knew how good R9 was, and if not for injuries, maybe he would be on the same level as Messi and Cristiano. But for now, he helps complete our Ballon d'Or only team. I mean, look at just how insane this is. If this team doesn't win the Champions League, there's something wrong with FC25. Although I can see why this team might fail because there are only attackers on the bench. But hey, these are all Ballon d'Or winners. Let's make our way through the season and see if the best individual players can win the biggest collective trophies. Why am I even surprised? The Ballon d'Or FC has made the Champions League final. Yo, they also won the Premier League, but they lost to Newcastle. That makes no sense. Oh, but look at that. This though Stoichkov top scorer with 45 goals. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, it's because Cristiano Ronaldo's rating just got too low and he barely played. Benzema couldn't get a single game in. R9 Ronaldo that was insane. 36 goals. Ah, oh, same with Messi. He had a bit of a stinker. So Bobby Charlton was the one who played. I'm sorry, guys. In that case, I think we're gonna have to put Hristo Stoichkov in the starting 11. Messi's gonna have to get benched too for Sir Bobby Charlton. Here we go, guys. Time to see the Ballon d'Or FC in action. Bro, this needs to be an absolute destruction in the Champions League final. I'm talking 4 or 5 nil. I mean, how do you defend against Ronaldinho cutting in like that. I mean, there's literally nothing you can do. Ronaldinho goes for the finesse, and I mean, it's too good. Nah, man, this team is unfair. I haven't even mentioned Zizou. I mean, look at him go. This is going to be too easy. It is too easy. Zinedine Zidane, bang. Now we could be getting another goal. Risto Stoichkov, this is crazy. You know what? For the second half, I'm bringing on Ronaldo and Messi. Come on, man. It's a Ballon d'Or FC team. If I don't bring on the two goats, nah, it'll be just wrong. It would be wrong to not have Ronaldo get a goal. And there it is. Oh, look at Messi and Ronaldo there. 13 Ballon d'Ors combined. Why am I surprised at seeing the Ballon d'Or FC come together and win the Champions League? It was obvious. But there's still one more thing I want to see. Who wins the Super Ballon d'Or? All right, we've made it to the Ballon d'Or ceremony. This is the ultimate Ballon d'Or. Which one of them is going to win it? And it's Ronaldo. Oh, it's R9. Okay, I think the only reason Messi or Cristiano didn't win this was because they don't have their icon ratings. Otherwise, we would have seen a different winner. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, click here to watch me build a team of only left-footed players. That team was pure magic.